Welcome to SHTV. I'm your host, Naomi Manuk. Here at Surpagob, we all love some competition. So let's start with a little basketball. Guess the flag. USA. Ah, uh, Angola. Canada. Canada. Italy. Portugal. France. France. Iceland. Iceland. <laughs> Mozambique. Mozambique. Yeah. Algeria. Tunisia. <laughs> A little competition is vital. In the next piece, we're going to see some clips from the public speaking competition and as well as hear from the winner of the writing competition.
So Dar Daria has heard all the evidence that her parents have been um, presenting to her, and she's ready to make her ruling. So. so you have to look at them in the eye and explain it to them so that they understand and accept your ruling. Okay. I want to proceed now. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would like to contact my friends whenever I want to. Um, <laughs> and not that you want to. If you decided you're going to do it, yeah. it's going to happen. Um, <laughs> I want to have Wi-Fi until later than 8.30 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> um, Not that you want to, it's going to happen. Yeah, You're it's going to happen. It. <laughs> um, <laughs> it does not seem like it has been decided yet. <laughs> um, um, yeah, um, I don't know. <laughs> so for all those reasons, there's going to be Wi-Fi until 8.30. Until longer than 8.30. Okay, longer than 8.30. <laughs> there you go. So then once you've done your decision, you stand up and walk down the stairs. There you go. Everybody has to stand up. There you go. So you had all that authority and you used it to your advantage. Yeah, and it's it. final, right? Yeah. They have to follow. They have to, they can appeal. Uh, yeah. And uh, oh, you, you might be surprised that they are also the Court of Appeal. So uh, they might overrule your decision, but they'll have to have a good reason for it. Yeah, we are going to persuasive. Yeah. For the first cycle of the secondary, secondary level, sorry, English sector, the student whose text was chosen by the jury is Daria Raznagian. Daria? Um, I, just wanted, uh, I just wanted to say that I'm honored to be here, um, first of all. So I was asked to um, make a, an essay about um, if, I had the if I had the possibility of proposing a new law or amending an existing one. I would propose a law about how kids under 16 shouldn't consume any social media. In today's generation, almost every kid has a phone and social media account um, towards, the age of, towards the age of 10. Um, all of my friends had that phones at that age. Meanwhile, I was constantly arguing with my parents why I can't get a phone at 13, and they would tell me that I, had, I would have to wait until I was in secondary five because having a phone at my age is no use. It's not like I take the bu public bus every day to go and come back from school. Kids under 16 that have social media apps are more likely to have mental issues, depression, anxiety, addiction, or cause self-harm. This can also lead to cyberbullying, loss of privacy, and sleep disruption, mainly because of Snapchat and TikTok. Snapchat can keep you up um, at night texting others, and TikTok can, TikTok can um, show you videos that relate to your content. Lack of sleep can affect your behavior in school and will cause you to be tired. In that case, you will not be able to focus on your current work, which is another effect of these famous apps. Sh social media can ruin the children's confidence, confidence and how they see themselves. It does not have a positive impact on them because they will always think that they don't look good enough and overthink everything that goes through their minds. I know this because I have experienced something like this not long ago. I was always overthinking my appearance because I have an autoimmune disease called alopecia, where it causes my hair to fall out. I was scared of what others thought, thought of me because of the people because the people I would hang out with who were better looking. This law could help the younger kids and teens that are under 16 develop a stronger com develop a stronger confidence and socialize with others. This way, they could experience a better life than the teenagers today that end up being depressed. And all this just because of these disastrous apps. It is certainly not healthy, and it also happens that you send or post a picture to your friends, and sometimes those pictures can get to bad individuals who might have bad impressions. Intentions, sorry. It is called invasion of privacy. Once you send that photo out, it is impossible to delete it or get a hold of it. In conclusion, I would personally create a law for kids under 16 not to consume any social media because of all the negative effects it can have. Teens should stay away from social media to protect their identity, reputation, and mental health. 
I just need to tell you this. Uh, you're very beautiful. You, should, I, you want to see hair loss? This is hair loss. <laughs> and and uh, the most important part is if you lose your hair, never lose your, your sense of humor. And it will work. Trust me on this. No, more seriously. It, it, was, it, was, it, it was a fantastic text that you wrote. And I was kind of a... I, 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 did I really heard you well when you said that all of your friends when you were 10 years old? Had, you did say okay, all maybe of your friends. not all, but most of them. Most of them? Yeah, because I would see them, let's say if they came to my house or something, they would have a screen or a phone with them. With, yeah. Really? Okay. That seems a bit early. I'll agree with you. Yeah, yeah. I'll agree with you. But again, and this is my recurring theme in my questioning, it is not easy to draft a law. So, in doing your research, I was wondering, did, did you, do you know what is the minimum age, I don't, I'm sure it's not 10 years old, what is the minimum age to have an account on, on Snapchat or on, on TikTok, to take those, or I, any other example? I'm not a good example because I have those apps, Okay. but I would think the age would be 16 plus. And if I was to tell you that it's 13, would you believe me? It would be... Um, it would seem a bit early. Yeah. But it's 13. So my question to you, and that's when it's very, very difficult. You chose 16 years old. I was wondering, why not 13, 14, or 15, or even 17? I, I, you're still not an adult at 17 years old, legally. So why did you make that choice? It's not, it's not easy. I find that if you start using social media a bit later on in life, let's say, like 16, it sounds like a good age because you're about somewhere finishing school and then college and stuff and okay. oh, sorry. it can help you uh, stay um, like focused yeah focused and um, it can help you get better like I said stronger confidence because it, it can bring you down social media can bring you down because of all the stuff said on there and it just 16 sounds like a good age do you have a phone now? No. You have to wait till Saturday five. Okay. My last question. Your parents are probably gonna not like my last question. <laughs> <laughs> do you think you'll be ready? Like, you know, you wrote very, very, very well about the effects of social media, and I think that you did so in a, in a very, very mature way. You already know the dangers. Do you think you're ready for a phone today? Um. Like I said, I don't really have a use for it, but it would be I would be happy to have be able I'm not to happy. Have I'm asking you, are you ready? <laughs> okay. No. Okay. Turn up. Thank you so much. <laughs> Our winners you can get back to your seats. You did so well. Merci beaucoup. In this same category, two mentions were awarded by the jury. Congratulations to Lucas Green from St. George's School of Montreal and Mary Melikian from L'Ecole Arménienne Soup Ago. My proposed law. Canada is known for being a country of immigrants, and it's true. The current statistics show that the annual immigration in this country amounts to almost 500,000 new immigrants. Canada is trying to offer the best services in order to help these newcomers find jobs, improve their language skills, put their, ch ch their children in school, and much more. But there are still small problems that can be fixed. For example, help them find family doctors. This problem does not affect the immigrants only. More than 6 million Canadians don't have their own family doctors, plus this problem is getting worse. The main reason for this difficulty is because there aren't enough doctors for the whole population, especially with the big amount of immigration. There are some other reasons causing this issue as well. One of them is that many medical students aren't encouraged to continue studying as a family doctor. And another cause is the difficult and long process to qualify doctors coming from different countries to work in Canada. These doctors, who have graduated outside of our country, are obliged to be trained for three to seven years in hospitals to be licensed and worked as a doctor in Canada. This period of time is known as residency. However, 
The big barrier that is blocking the residency process is the limited amount of uh, residency places available for the internationally trained doctors. The result of this barrier is that more than 13,000 doctors who have graduated outside of our country are not able to work here. So, how can we overcome this problem? My suggestion is to put a new law to help these doctors f uh, uh, to finish their residency faster. So, my proposed law would be to take into consideration the experiences and the years that the doctors have practiced before coming to Canada. With that information, the country is, uh, the, the people in charge could decide the timing of the doctor's training. training. For example, the doctors who have uh, graduated medical school many years ago and have mastered their job could uh, finish their residency in less than two years. On the other hand, newly graduated international doctors with less experience have to complete their residency of three to four years. By this way, it could decrease the lack of training places for doctors and increase the number of family doctors for the Canadians. Not only that, but it could also reduce the number of patients that need emergency care in hospitals because of their regular visit to their family doctor. In this last category, six mentions were awarded by the jury. Congratulations to Karni Keshishian from L'Ecole Arménienne sur Agop. My name is Kadni Keshishan and I'm going to be reading my honorable mention text. Picture this. The first time the boy tried a cigarette, he was 14 years old. He had stolen it from his father's pack and smoked it with his friends, thinking it made him seem much older and wiser than his years. The first inhale made him cough. However, the next one was smoother, soothing. Quickly, the boy found himself enjoying the bitter taste in his mouth. Soon enough, his impulsive decision turned into a cigarette a week, then one a day. Suddenly, the boy could not last a few hours without the nicotine in his bloodstream. Eventually, he found a wife, had children, but his reliance never subsided. At 50 years old, the man was diagnosed with lung cancer. The cigarettes had blackened his lungs and there was no cure. Despite the diagnosis, the man was not able to quit and in the span of a few years, his illness took his life, leaving his wife a widow and his children without a father. That man was my grandfather. This story is also that of thousands of other people every day. This raises the question, should cigarettes be legal? If I had the power to change any law, I would make the trade of cigarettes illegal. The undeniable destruction they cause in the addicts and their families' lives can no longer be ignored. Cigarette smoking takes the life of over 8 million people every year. Unlike other illnesses, it is a preventable disease, meaning every single one of those 8 million dead could have lived if they had never had access to tobacco. 8 million that would have loved and laughed for years more. Instead, the legalization and easy access to cigarettes made them slowly fade away while they tried to grasp onto their health like water running through their fingers. First, their teeth might have rotted away, then they might have had vision or hearing loss, followed by a severe infection before a stroke killed them. The effects of tobacco on the human body are horrific and, most of the time, completely unavoidable. The terrifying reality is that two-thirds of long-term smokers die from smoking-related illnesses. While addiction is extremely hard to quit, the ban of cigarettes would be a pivotal step in the right direction. By creating this law, we would be killing the problem from the root, from the root cause, decreasing considerably the access to tobacco and, therefore, the gun that has murdered so many unknowing victims until today. While smoking might sometimes be one's personal decision, the harm it unknowingly causes to the people surrounding him or her is as severe as the symptoms. Passive smoke, the inhalation of tobacco smoke, causes over 1.3 million deaths every year. These are children and loved ones who had to bear the consequences of the lack of regulations on cigarettes. Think of the mourning daughters, sons, wives, husbands, mothers and fathers who could not help their loved ones escape from the spiral of addiction to nicotine. While that pain is already intolerable, they were diagnosed with heart disease from being surrounded by smoke for most of their lives. Addiction is no longer only a personal issue. Children of smokers had no say in who raised them or the environment they grew up in, but they were forced to carry those burdens well into their adulthood. Smoking cigarettes has been so normalized that we no longer see the loss it is creating around us. Not only does it have addicts and the grim reaper's chokehold, it has also become a prison for households and communities. Therefore, who would we be if we allowed this to continue? 
What would our values be if we allowed people to buy ticking time bombs at gas stations as if it were a pack of gum? We need strict laws banning the trade of cigarettes. We should do it for my grandfather's sake, for our family's sake, and for society's sake. Les parents avec les photos, tu le sais. Attention. Go. On est sûr? C'est bon? Ok. Oui, Mais attends, 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 juste une seconde. Oui, c'est ça. Là, pour, pour des faits publicitaires. <rire> ok, c'est bon, Lucie. Merci, Merci. Ouais, ouais, ouais. C'est bon, compris, notre <rire> Give me some kind of chance I gotta enter a new mode Or else I'll get KO'd My life's at a crossroad I'm ready to reload I gotta learn some kind of lesson from my past I made mistakes but I learned how to react I love the chase but I need a new path To have a chance to get what I wanna grab A good life has a good purpose Something that makes everything that you're doing worth it Something with a bigger meaning that's under the surface Cause that's what's gonna keep you working It's a journey to make it I got a life in the making I choose how I'm gonna shape it I got new lights in rotation I flip a switch, I'm fixated I'm sick of patience and waiting My destiny is awaiting I will be the best Headed out for change I just started on my quest Yeah, the world will know my name I'm excited, I'm obsessed No one in my way but myself And a test yeah, I will be the best Yeah, I will be the best Life is just a game I'll be playing till I rest I'll be there to claim my own spot among the best Deep within my mind, I'll put all my fear to rest Cause I will be the best, yeah, I will be the best This life is a journey worth taking Every breath in it is sacred It gets hard and frustrating But trust me, you just gotta embrace it Cause what's a journey without enemies? You need some friends, a foe, and an identity You need an arc, a battle, a little density Create a little bit of energy President of the United States. George Washington. How many bones do worms have in their bodies? Zero. Yeah. <laughs> Where is the Taj Mahal? 
India? <laughs> Which is the largest bird in the world? Goose. We'll say pelican. I don't know. Okay, it was ostrich. Oh, okay. According to Guinness World Records, what's the best selling book of all time? Harry Potter? No. Bible. Yeah. What galaxy do we live in? Mercury? Yes. Yeah. Uh, which planet is known as the blue planet? Earth. No. A pickle is made from which fruit or vegetable? Cucumber. In which language does Konnichiwa mean hello? China? No. In Japanese. Yeah. As we just saw clips from the public speaking competition, we thought it would only be fitting to sit down with the winner, Naidi Chuga Kelyan, and ask her five questions. Hi, my name is Naidi Chuga Kelyan. I am a secondary five student and I won the fifth annual William Sadaran public speaking competition. How would you describe competitivity? So in my opinion, competitivity is when you try to beat other, others, be better than them, um, do things better than them, and oftentimes um, it's because you want to prove something to yourself and to others. You want to prove that you can do this, you're better than anyone else. Are you a competitive person? I would say I'm somewhat competitive. Um, I'm competitive in the sense that I always want to do my best and be the best at what I, what I do. So I put in maximum effort and that just gives me the drive to win and um, succeed, I guess. But also I won't let my competitivity get in the way of my respect for others. So um, I, I won't want to bring them down or um, wish them like uh, wish them to fail. How did you feel when you won the public speaking competition? So honestly, I was pretty surprised because I knew that there was a lot of tough competition and everyone did very uh, everyone did incredible speeches. But um, I was pretty confident and I was really proud when they announced my name because I put a lot of effort into my speech and I was very grateful um, that it paid off. So I was really happy. How much time did you spend to learn your part and what was the hardest one? So basically we had already presented our speech in front of, in front of the class um, a month or so before. So all my uh, preparation and practicing was done um, before. Um, and I practiced a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, I practiced in front of the mirror, in front of my parents, and I even recorded myself and listened to that a few times. So yeah, I took a lot of time to um, prepare for my speech. And the hardest part I would say was in the beginning because I didn't really know what I was doing. It was the first time I was doing anything like this. So yeah, that was tough a bit. Do you think competitivity is a bad thing or a good thing? And explain why. I think like many other things in life, competitivity is good to a certain degree. Um, I think we all need uh, to be a little bit competitive in life and it's important to have um, that drive inside of you that pushes you to, to work and put effort into what you're doing so that you can win at something or just achieve things in life. 
so that's really important. But at the same time, some people become too competitive and they let that get in the way of what's important. They get jealous of others when they don't win and they, their relationships with other people are just ruined. So that's, that's really unpleasant, I think. So I think a balance is good always. country in Europe that starts with the letter D? Uh, Denmark. <laughs> what is the smallest country in the world? Skip. What was the first animal in outer space? Dog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are three countries <laughs> in Europe that have no armies? Uh, Switzerland? No. Sweden, mean. Sweden. No. Skip. Okay. Netherlands? No. It was Andorra, Iceland, and Monaco. What galaxy do we live in? No clue. Yeah. Who gave us the US Statue of the Liberty? France. <laughs> yeah. What food never spoils? Like never goes bad. Honey, honey, honey. Mm -hmm. Onions? A pickle is made from which fruit or vegetable? Cucumber. Uh, cucumber. <laughs> okay, so. uh, in, in which language does Konnichiwa mean Halloween? Chinese. Japanese. Japanese. <laughs> Thank you. Not all competitions are based on intellect or athletics. I have two words for you, iced tea. Hi, SHTV viewers. In the following clip, you will see Monsieur Patrick trying to guess five brands of iced tea. Brisk, Nesty, Half and Half, Arizona, and Pure Leaf. Watch the following clip to see if he guesses them all. Petit qu'on les nomme encore. Bon. C'est parce que je les vois pas toutes les. Ok, ça, d'après moi, c'est le pure leaf. Pure leaf. Ok. Ok. Ça là, ça doit être. So that's Arizona, Nesty, Arizona. Pure Leaf, Half and Half, Brisk. Okay, well, that's Arizona. Celui-là. Celui-là, ça doit être Pure Leaf. Ça, c'est Nesty. C'est quoi la sorte, là? Celui-là, c'est Arizona. Je sais pas, c'est quoi. Ça, c'est le brisque, ça c'est sûr. Nesty, brisque, ça c'est sûr. Ok, so, n'en avez encore? Je pense que... Je sais pas c'est quoi les saveurs, ça. Ça va? C'est green tea. Green tea? Ok. Donc, ça c'est pas dégacé. Ça, c'est la limonade. C'est là? Ouais. Puis. T'es glacé. Nasty. Pure leaf. Risk. Là. Alors, faut-tu mettre les bons? Oui. Ok. Ça. J'ai dit quoi? J'ai dit ça, c'est. Ça, c'est. Euh, euh, non, celui-là, t'as dit green tea. Okay. So, le dernier, c'était brisk. Le dernier, c'était brisk. Non, il a dit que c'était brisk. Ça, c'était brisk. Ça, c'était pas brisk. Le troisième, c'est ici. Elle a brisk? Oui. Half and half, c'était le dernier. Pure leaf, 
So ta i nesti J'ai eu ces trois là. Oui. Ces deux là, c'est ça la différence? Oui. Vous êtes sûr de faire checker ça? Ah oui, c'est bon. Ouais. <rire> Mais. Ah ouais. D'accord. Global warming is caused by the excess of which type of gas? CO2. Uh, yeah. What is the largest continent in the world? Uh, Asia. 2-0. How many teeth does an average adult have? 32. Who wrote the Harry Potter books? J.K. Oh, Vanna gets that. And it's 3-1. How many hearts does an op octopus have? Eight. Three. Three. Oh. <laughs> How many cards are there in a complete pack of cards? Sixty-two. Fifty-two. Sixty-two. Oh, okay. Three, three. Ah. What is the capital of Canada? Ottawa. Uh, Thai. Oh, okay. You want? Yeah, I want. Uh, what colors make green? Blue and yellow. Being in competition is much easier than organizing one. That's the topic of this week's SHTV Challenge. Hi, I'm Karin Doshkurian, the host of the SHTV Challenge. What's more fun than putting people up against each other in useless competitions for useless prizes? Does SHTV have a prize? Probably not, Mr. Loose Cheap. Let's see what this week's challenge is. Hi, I'm Siena Jabran, Challenge Master. This week's challenger has to organize a game of dodgeball. They're gonna be playing dodgeball? I love dodgeball. Please do teachers versus students, please. Let's see if it is teachers versus students or if it's something worse. Hi, my name is Arsen and I think I can put together a game of dodgeball. Oh, it's them? Against everybody? Yeah, I don't really have high hopes for this, so let's see them fail. That was very, very entertaining. You know what you should do, Mr. Lu? You should go up against all the people who hate you. Yeah, so it's gonna be everyone against you. Like 200 versus one. Stay tuned for next week's SHTV challenge. How many balls are on a full table at the start of a game? Eight! No. What? Eleven. Nine. Mm -hmm. Ten. Twelve. Five. Sixteen. Yes. Sixteen. Bingo! What are the five types of animals? Mammals, amphibians, reptiles. Yes. 
Uh, Two more. Uh, uh, mm. Insects. Insects. No. Mm. But are we just bring them? <laughs> I haven't named you one. Know? I haven't named one. Skip. Okay, okay. Okay, I guess she, she wants. She wants. She wants. Okay, she wants. What is the language spoken in Brazil? Uh, Portugal. Uh, yes. po po no. Portuguese. Portuguese. Yes. In what country did the first Starbucks open outside of North you, America? You should know that. I don't have no idea. Uh, out of North America? Yeah. I have no idea. She should know that. I have no idea. It's in Asia. Asia? China? No. Uh, Korea? India? Thailand? Japan? Yeah. Japan. Oh. What animal breathes out of its butt? Breathes out of its butt? Yeah. Yes. Oh, I thought it was breathe out of the butt. Hey. <laughs> Bro, yeah. okay, okay, never mind. Hint, uh, it, it's... An animal that can go in on land in on water. A no. fish. Crab, crab. No. Lobster. On land and uh, in water. Yeah. yeah. Axolotl. What? No. Uh. Uh. Go out. Uh, turtle. Yeah. Turtle. Yeah. Turtle. Yeah. Yeah. turtle. He won. I won. I'm like that. Bravo. Good job, man. Thank you. Thank you for watching SHTV. Over the course of this episode, we had a trivia competition. Let's leave you with one more round. Who is the president of Russia? <laughs> Vladimir Putin. Yes. Uh, what do you call a group of flamingos? I know this one. A gang. Uh, a pack? A school? No, no, that's fish. Wait, it's funny, I know this one. Give me the first letter. F. <laughs> a flock? No. A flock of seagulls. Yes. Okay. Okay, no, but it was flamboyant. Oh. <laughs> you always get it after. Um, what is the capital of Egypt? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll give you this one, yeah. Cairo. Yes. Uh, what is the largest joint in the body? Largest joint? Uh-huh. The spine. <laughs> okay, don't get it. Don't the knee? Yes. yes. Ah! Feels my knee hurts right now. What is the process of a caterpillar changing into a butterfly collar? Metamorphosis. <laughs> I knew that I was also. Uh, what percentage of the human body is made of, of water? Uh huh. 75%? No. 93? No. Who's closer? Hey. Okay. 72%? Uh, no. 70%? No. Well, you were closer, you won. 60. 60? Oh, I win. I still win. Ooh, you. Name the six main characters in the TV show Friends. Stop! <laughs> you did that before they even finished the question. I didn't even know the question. <laughs> Joey Chandler and Ross, Rachel, Monica, and Phoebe. Yes. Uh, which country is known as the land of the rising sun? Japan. <laughs> yes. Who invented electricity? It was a toy. Okay. What is it? You don't know. <laughs> Hold on. Bell. <laughs> Wait, no. Don't say it. Wait! We're against each other, right? Team here. Okay, Edison. Okay. Yes! No? No! no. no. <laughs> yes! Are you guys the light bulb? Uh, I'm done. I like you. Einstein? No. No. What's the answer? Don't, the first letter. B. Bell! No! Oh, 
would have telephoned. Okay, no one gets it. No it one was, gets it. It was Benjamin Franklin. I knew that. You couldn't say the first the letter of the last name. Story. Yeah. Yeah. No. First letter. You know what? Because of this, we're gonna force you to see all the Franklin's names of Philadelphia. Okay. And finally, how many time zones are there in Canada? Five. Four. No. Seven. Six. No. Six. <laughs> oh, yeah. Six. Five, four, three, four. Give us the point equally. Split it. Point five. Okay. Mm -hmm. Participate. That's you. So, what's the score? 